begin the new Mesech, the Mesech Tzerevin, begin on the base, the beginning, where she is co-sponsored by Kazakh and Chesko to any time, Dafachayim. Just a small introduction. Actually, we did a beautiful video. You can find it. It's all over on all the platforms regarding Dafayemi, on Lakewood School, for all Daf. You can find our introduction for Irvin. It's very important. You see, you'll get a good hecket, a good overview of the whole Mesechta. Our Mesechta Irvin generally is like a continuation of the previous Mesechta of Shabbos, which discussed the law of the last Malacha of Haitzah. Erevin is a continuation of that regarding what is permitted and what's forbidden regarding Haitzah. Just to get an understanding of what the Parakim are going to look like, the first two Parakim are going to be discussing Erubah Chatzeris, which is being allowed to carry in the common area, let's say, in our developments. Then in the third to fifth parak is going to be discussing Erev Tchumen, the ability to be able to go beyond your Shabbos residence to go another 2,000 hours. And the sixth to the ninth parak is going to be discussing what type of domains require an Erev. And the last, the tenth parak, discusses certain halachas regarding the malacha of Beitzah. And she is co-sponsored, like I said, Kazakh and Echesko, Tarim Tam Dafachayim. Some of these we're going to be discussing when we discuss today, Masech the Zerven, is there's two types of mavoi which there's a, what's called a mavim mefulish, which is that the common area between the courtyards is open area. And then there's, what we're going to be discussing is called a mavim she'en mefulish. It's not open, it's not flush on both sides. It's called a mavim sasim, a closed mavim. And that is, what well, you had this common area, and you had the, the Jew, this is in Talmudic style. I, I know a lot of people are giving introductions about how this is practical. I'm very into, you learn the daf. You learn the Talmud, you'll get the understanding when you do it that way. So you have the, the way it was in Talmudic times was there were houses opened up into courtyards and the courtyards opened up into, so you would, you would imagine this like a cul-de-sac, like a dead end. And so those were the three different areas. You have houses opening to courtyards and courtyards opening into mavis and those mavis opened up into the Rishos Saram. And that's what our parish deals with, this area, what we call the mavis, which is like an entryway. So like, Minat Taira, carrying is permitted in all of these areas, in the houses to the courtyards, the courtyards to the Mavoy. The reason why is that we're gonna learn in today's daf, Rashi tells us that Rosh Hashanah is only if it's 16 amas wide, and 600,000 people pass daily, and it's open. Here, it doesn't have those dimensions, and anyway, it's enclosed on three sides, the Mavoy. So, biblically, it's actually permitted to carry the thing is Rabbana made it forbidden simply because it could be confused. It's a common area like Rosh Hashanah, and therefore they said it's forbidden, but biblically it's permitted, and therefore there are certain leniencies that they allowed to be able to carry over there in what we consider a, 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 a closed area. Like we said, this is the Mavi, and this is Rosh Hashanah, so Rabbana made it forbidden. So some of the things we'll see that are leniencies allowing you to carry over there, it's called the Lechi, is a side post. That's something that would already be considered as the fourth wall. Or Kaira, which is a crossbeam, which is actually going to be the topic of our daf today, which is either considered as a reminder, a hecker, a sign, or is actually a halachic wall that we consider as the fourth wall. And then there's something called the Tzur Sapesach, which has the form of a, an entryway, which has even a greater level of leniency because it's almost, it's like a Pesach itself. So we have a Machlekes Tanoim in today's daf regarding the height of the Kaira and the width of the Kaira. And finally, we have certain discussions regarding the measurements of various doorways that they were by the Beis Amigdash, which is the source, according to one opinion, where we know the halacha, what a Pesach is, and of that of the Mishkan. So, just one more idea is that when we do this, the, the daf, the daf HaChayim style, there's really three parallel uh, uh, processes that are going on at the same time. You could just do the Gemara, which I just do the Gemara, I translate it. But parallel to that, I do Rashi, and I'm doing it outside. You can follow with the Rashi inside. A third parallel is with Taisis. I sometimes allude to Taisis, and even when I say that that's how Rashi explains it, I'm really, if you're noticing, I'm saying that that's not like how Taisis explains it. So those are three parallel tracks at the same time. You do just the Gemara, you can do the Rashi, just look on, you'll see I'm translating every word of Rashi, and then there's the third track of Taisis, but that's, that's the concept we're talking about. So let's begin the current topic. Mavoy, we're talking about an enclosed alleyway which they place a cross beam on top of the alleyway. Like we said, that, that serves as a reminder that that's the end of the Mavi. Shahu, that the cross beam is Gavaya, is very high, Lamala Masram Amma, it's higher than 20 Amas. Now, as we explained, this beam is coming to permit carrying inside that Mavi. Because biblically, like we said, the prohibition of carrying a Shabbos is only Rosh Hashanah, only a public domain. What's a public domain? 
that's a highway, that's, a, that's the marketplace, like the Gemara says in Shabbat Tavav Medav, which is similar to that, what they had in the Midbar, which all the halachas of Shabbat, we learn now what was in the days of the Mishkan. Now the calves of the Levim, they were a width of 16 amas, like the Gemara says, they must the Shabbat of Tzadik Tesamel. So therefore it's not going to be a Rishas Rabbim if it's less than 16 amas in the width, and also it has to be open on both sides. A Mavoy is narrower, it's not 16 amas wide, and also, even if it would be 16 amas wide, it's not open on both sides, it's what's called mavulish. Rather, one side is open to the Rosh Hashanah, but the other side is closed off. Because as Rashi explains, actually, if the mavi is open on both sides, actually, it's not permissible with what we're discussing over in the Mishnah, with a kray or with a cross, because the Gemara is going to say later on, the vav on the So since we're starting with that premise, that this area that we're talking about, as you can see in the picture, is not a Rosh Hashanah, because it's not open on both sides, so biblically, you're allowed to carry it without doing anything. The Rabbana made a Xerid Rabbana, they made a decree that you might come to Kavir with a Rosh Hashanah. It looks just like a Rosh Hashanah, you can't really tell it different. It looks just like the street. So therefore they said rabbinically not to carry over it. But they permitted with certain takhanas, with certain rectifications, with let's say a lechi, what we've showed in the introduction of a side post, or a kaira or a cross name. These are going to be some of the things we're going to be speaking about a lot in this Masechta. And the reason for that is, at least according to one opinion, is that it should be a hacker, a sign. You see, oh, ad kan ha'eriv. You know, you see, this is where it is. That's what the kaira is, that you shouldn't come to permit carrying in the Rosh Hashanah Gemur. Now, what's the halach if, let's say, the kaira is higher than 20 amas, so that's a machlik, it's not Mishnah. Now, the Kama says, you might. You should lower it down. And the Gemara is going to explain what's the reason for this. Now, it's interesting that Taisis asked that why you're starting off with what you should do to lower it, you should have first said that the way to rectify a mavi is with a lechi or a kaira, and then if it's higher than 20 amas, you should lower it down. So that says Taisis that, and that now we'll understand the Gemara's question, that no, actually we prefer to start off with this type of terminology. If it's higher than 20 amas, what you should do, because it's actually follows after the wording in the Mishnah Masech, the Sukkah, that also says if you have a discha higher than 20 amas, what's the halacha going to be? So therefore it starts off like that, but it doesn't even tell us that what the halacha is, but it says if it's higher than 20 amas, you have to lower it down. He says, in the Tzarek, he says, no, you don't have to lower it down. It's valid as it is, even though it's higher than 20 amas. I'm seeing the Gemara exactly what's their machlekes. Now, now another uh, related machlekes is varachim me'eser amas. Let's say it's wider than 10 amas. So we just spoke about higher than 20 amas. What's ever wider than 10 amas? So the Tanik says, you might, you should lower it, you, you should make it smaller. Meaning to say the width of a, an opening is only 10 amas. More than that, it's not considered any more Pesach, an opening, it's what's called a Pirza, a breach. And we need to have an opening. So what you have to do is, as this picture shows, you have to put p- poles to, to, to diminish the opening of the, of the entryway and to make it 10 amas or less. That's if it's more than 10 amas. Then says the Mishnah above, let's say it has the form of an opening, which is a side post, a side post, and a lintel on top of them. So then, Amos then says the mission, even if it's wider than 10 Amos, in you don't have to make it smaller, that's okay. But Tzuriza Pesach is a Pesach. So even if it's more than 10 Amos, it has the form of an opening, it is an opening. So therefore it's going to be okay even if it's more than 10 Amos. Now the Gemara asks an interesting question. Tanan Hasa, we learned over the in the Mishnah Masech the Sukkah. It says a very similar halacha, like Taisa said from the Rimar Alliance, that's why we said the similar wording in our mission. Sukkah should give you a If you have a sukkah higher than 20 amas, psula, it's puzzled. Sukkah can't be higher than 20 amas. Rabbi Huda Machshir says, no, it's going to be valid. But says the Gemara the following question. Maishna Gabi Sukkah, why is it different than by when we talk about the mitzvah of sukkah? Tani psula. It says, invalid. That's it, done. We got to be tani tikanta. Yet by the halach of our Mishnah of Mavoy, it started telling us what you could rectify. It said, you may, you should lower it down. Why doesn't it say, like it says over there, puzzle, invalid? Here it starts telling us what we could do about it. So the Gemara has two different approaches. Sukkah, by the mitzvah sukkah, the reasoning over there is dairais. It's a biblical halacha, like the Gemara, like the Pasuk says, that, you're, that your, your generations should know that you sat in tents in the desert. So tani psula. So therefore, we learned the wording of invalid because from the days of Moshe Rabbeinu, we already knew the measurement has to be somewhere where the eye can see, which is only up to two neyamas. The Chacham are just coming to tell you that if you don't do that, then it's going to be possible. So it's appropriate to use the terminology of invalid, invalidity. Now, even though, yes, you're right, you could say what you could do to fix it, but as long as you don't fix it, it's called possible. 
The thing is, but by Mavoy, where the whole halacha is the Rabbanon, you can't say it's invalid, because here we're coming to tell you and teach you what is the halachas that the Rabbanon are coming to introduce. How could you say puzzle? We didn't even tell you yet what the measurement is to tell you that if you don't do that, it's going to be puzzle. So, Tanit, that kind of So, we told you a way of rectifying, say, okay, let me tell you what we expect of you. This is what you have to do. We can't say it's puzzle. Puzzle what? You didn't tell me that you even had this, because it's a rabbinic law. That's why Rashi explains that first Gemara's answer. Bibai saying, if you want, you could say a second approach. The truth is, by biblical law, you also in general say a takana. So why over here by sukkah did we not say the takana of being memayed, of lowering it down? Ella sukkah, the reason why by sukkah is because the nefesh and melee. So a lot of different halachas over there in that Mishnah 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 Sukkah. It talks about if it doesn't have three walls, it talks about if it's not ten tefachim high, it talks about if you have more sun than shade. So therefore, since there was so much Allah has passed like Vatani Basula, we just said it clean and clear and cut, and we just said, okay, it's invalid. Can I put them all into one Mishnah? Because if you're going to start saying the takan of all the halachas of the problems of sukkah, you wouldn't be able to put it together, because each one requires its own individual rectification. Regarding if it doesn't have three walls, you would have to say, make a wall. Regarding that it's not ten tefachim you would have to say, you have to hire it. Regarding that there's more sun than shade, you would have to say, okay, you have to add on to the schach. And the Gemara says in Psachim that a person should always be short and concise, the way some people like this da. You know, the yeah, you know, short and to the point, you know, don't start becoming lengthy. So therefore, we said by Sukkot Puzzle, so you could make it very succinct. By Mavoy, by our Mishnah, the Leidna Fishimil, there's not many halachas regarding it. Tani Tekanta, we said, just lower it and shorten the width. It's very simple to say it, so we're going to say the Takana. Those are the two reasons why our Mishnah is different than the Mishnah in Sukkah Sukkah. Either because here it's rabbinic and there it's biblical, or because here it's very easy to say what the Takana is. There it's, it would require a lot of words, therefore we just said that it's going to be possible. Now, continue on this theme regarding the Machlekes in our Mishnah, regarding the Mavoy. Could it be higher than 20 Amis, or it's not allowed to be? So Amr Behidim Rabbi says, Chacham Leilam Du, the sages didn't learn that the, the, the Mavoy could only be, the Kaira, the crossman, could only be up until 20 Amis. Elamei Pischa Shal Heichel. Remember, it's what's regarding what's called a Pesach. A Pesach is like really a wall, it's just an entryway. As long as you have an opening, so then it's going to be valid with the Kaira on the top. So now, where do we know that a Pesach, an opening, is only up until 20 Amis? From the opening of the Heichel, of the sanctuary of the Beisam Mikdash. Rabbi Huda Lilamda and Rabbi Huda says, no, it could be higher than that. He learned that Elmer Pischa Shulun from the antechamber. The way the base of Mikdash worked was that there was an antechamber that opened up into the Heichel. The antechamber was higher an opening than the Heichel was. So each one of them are learning from the base of Mikdash. The question is, but which entry are we talking about? That's not the Lilamda Mishnah Sextus Midas. Pischa Shulun, the opening of the, of the sanctuary, Gavah Yashamam, the high was only 20 hours. The width was 10 amas. That's exactly what the Tanakh Kama says in our Mishnah regarding the Mavoy. The height could only be 20 amas and the width could only be 10 amas. The Shalulam, but the antechamber, Gavay Arboam, the entryway into the Heichel, the height was 40 amas high. The Rachbay Esrim amas and the width was 20 amas. So therefore, Rabbi Yudas says it could be higher than 20 amas because we're not from the Ulam. As the Gemara says, Vishnei Makra Echadarsh, they actually both expand the same Pasik. The Pasik says, the Yikur Shchate Pesach Oil Mayid, that you have to slaughter the Karbanas by the opening of the Oil Mayid. What's the oil might? What's the tent of the assembly? It's the heichel, it's the sanctuary. Where that's where they had the golden mezbeach, they had the shulchan, they had the menaira. By all of them, it says the terminology of oil might. So what's the machlekes? So wait, which one? What, when you say Pesach oil might, which one is that referring to? So that's the machlekes. <coughs> Rabban and Sarvi, they hold Kedusha's heichel l'chud, but Kedusha's ulam l'chud. Each area of the base of Migdash had a different sanctity. Which means to say that the ulam, the, the, which is essentially the hallway leading into the heichel, that doesn't have the sanctity of the heichel. Anything that the avoid had to be in the heichel, the mizbech hazav and the menorah, if you would do it in the antechamber, it wouldn't be valid. So that's not called the oihel mayid. So that we don't find the pasuk calling its pesach, its opening as a pesach. It's only pesach oil mayid that we're referring to. Ah, so therefore the chiksev pesach oil mayid when it's saying the, entry, the opening of the of the oil mayid, a heichel is only going to heichel. That's where we find the terminology of pesach. That's only opening a height of 20 amas. We don't find the Pesach going on the Ulam, because the Ulam is not the same thing as the Heichel to be called as the Oil Might. Whereas Rabbi Huda said, Rabbi Huda held, however, that no, he- Heichel the Ulam Kedusha Achasi. He says, no, the Heichel and the Ulam have the same sanctity. And therefore, Bechik said Pesach Oil Might, and when it says the entry, the opening of the Oil Might, Atava Yehuda said it's going on both the, the Heichel and the Ulam. Because if you put them as Be'ezav, let's say there was no more room for some reason, you hit in the Ulam, it would be valid. Oh, so therefore you see that the, the, the opening to the Ulam is called the Pesach. That's even higher than 20 Amas. And therefore it says, it don't, the, the, the Mavoy, the Kaira does not have to be with the 20 Amas. It could be even higher. That's one interpretation. Vibai saying, if you want, you could say that actually, Yehudah Nami, 
Kedushas Ulam Luchod, but Kedushas Heichel Luchod. Now he agrees to the premise of the Tanakama that the Heichel and the Ulam have different sanctity. You can't put the Menorah, let's say, in the Ulam. So then why is it, where do you find then that the Pesach is considered even by the Ulam? The time of the Rebbe it's based on the Chesimah Pasach in Yechazkel. The Pasik says, El Pesach Ulam Abayis, to the opening, to the entryway of the Ulam, of the Bayis. So you see that the Ulam, its opening is called a Pesach. They would tell you, no, if it said to the opening of the Ulam of the Antichemic of the Ka'amr, then like, it would be like you said. It would say on the Ulam itself is called a Pesach. The Hashtag said, El Pesach Ulam Abayis, now it says to the entryway of the Antichemic of the Bayis, it's really referring to Habayis of the Suach Ulam. It's talking about the house that's opening to the Ulam, meaning it's really, really referring to the Heichel. The Ulam Habayis, the antechamber of the house, but the Pesach is going in the word Bayis. And the Ulam is secondary to the Bayis, so you don't really find that the word Pesach is going on the Ulam. That's a second interpretation from the Machlekes of the Behudam and the Rabbanu. But now the Gemara asks on the first interpretation, how could you even learn out from the Beis HaMikdash, from the Ulam, or from the Heichel itself, but for Hokik Siv Hai, when did this Pasik that you're bringing me, a Pesach Oyel Mayim, that Pasik, that's written by Mishkan. That was in the Mishkan in the Midbar. That's what Siv, that's what it says it. There was no Ulam over there. How could you learn that from the Ulam, according to Yehuda? And moreover, the Pesach Hechel in the Mishkan was only 10 Amasai, not 20 Amasai, because the Krashim, the beams, were only 10 Amas in the height. So it's difficult on both interpretations. The Mishkan was significantly smaller, the, the entryway, than the Beis HaMikdash. So now, how do we understand either one of those interpretations? The Pasuk you're bringing of, of a Pesach HaMayim refers to the Mishkan, not the Beis HaMikdash. The Mishkan was smaller, it was only head of 10 Amas. How could you say 20 or even more than that? So it's Gemara, Ashkechan Mishkan de Ikri Mikdash, because we find that the word, the Mishkan is called Mikdash, or Mikdash de Ikri Mishkan. So although we're having the Pasuk by the Mishkan, it's actually referring to the Mikdash. So when it says al Pesach al Mayid, it's not only referring to the al Mayid that was the Mishkan in the Midbar, it's also referring to the base of Mikdash. And we can learn that there from the measurements of the Mikdash as a Pesach. Where do we find Mishkan and Mikdash and Mikdash Mishkan? It says, if you don't say this idea, then Hadam reviewed the Mishmol. He says, Shlom Mishashach, and regarding the carbon Shlom that was slaughtered in the morning, before you open up the doors of the, of the sanctuary of the, of the Mesa Mikdash, the carbon is going to be invalid. How do you know this? Because whenever the Pasuk says in the Yikra, you have to slaughter the carbon by the entry of the Elmai, which tells us, the Pesach, meaning when it's open, the doors are closed, the carbon's not valid. But says the Gemara, when that Pasuk is written, it's by the Mishkan. How, do you, how would you know that Allah applies by the Mesa Mikdash? Or rather, obviously, Ashkechan Mikdash, take your Mishkan. Obviously, you find that the Mikdash, the base of Mikdash, is called Mishkan. But Mishkan, take your Mikdash. And the Mishkan is called Mikdash. And therefore, although that passage is by the Mishkan, it would apply just as well by the base of Mikdash. And now the Gemara explains. Bishlam Mikdash, take your Mishkan. We understand that the temple is called the tabernacle. Like it says, the passage can be Yikr. It says, I will place my resting place amongst you. Now, this passage was said at a time when the Mishkan was already up. Because this Pasuk is in Sefer Vayikra, what's called Teres Kayin. This whole Sefer Vayikra was told to Moshe Reynu in the Oyal Mayim. Like it starts with Sefer Vayikra, by Yedab Hashem Allah, May Oyal Mayim. So when he's telling him, I will place in the future my Mishkan, well, what Mishkan? The Mishkan's already up. Obviously, it's referring to the Mikdash. So you know that the Mikdash is called Mishkan. Because it says, Benasati Mishkan, in the Sefer, I will place my Mishkan. What you, which Mishkan? The Mishkan's already up. Obviously, it's referring to the Mikdash. But El Mishkan Yikri Mikdash Minalim. So, but where do you know that the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the one in the midbar, that was called Mikdash? I know the Mikdash was called Mishkan. How in the Mishkan is called Mikdash? Ile Midich said, if you think it's from a pasuk by midbar that says Benasa Kahas and that the the the, the family of Kahas from the Shevet Levi that they traveled, they would not say Hamikdash. They carried the Mikdash, which is referring to the Mishkan. You see, it's called Mikdash. The Kimar said Mishkan. They would direct the Mishkan Ad Boim until they came. So you see that the Mishkan is called Mikdash. Says the Gemara, no. As we continue to Med Beis, Hahu that the Aring Siv. That's written by the Ark. The, the family of Kahaz. They carried the Ark itself. Now, since it was more sanctified than all the other things they would carry, so that's called Mikdash because it's sanctified. But that's not going on the Mishkan itself. You don't find that the Mishkan is called Mikdash. It's referring to the Ark. That's called Mikdash because it's the more sanctified parts of the of the Mishkan. So it says the Gemara, Elam Hacher. Rather, we know from a pasuk in Shemais. Says the Asuli Mikdash. They they will they should make for me a Mikdash, a sanctuary. Vishakhanta Basaikim and I will dwell amongst them. That Pasik was said before they built the Mishkan, it was going in the Mishkan. So you see that Mishkan is called Mikdash, and you see that Mikdash is called Mishkan. So again, there it's not difficult why the Rabban and the Behudi could learn off in the base of Mikdash, even though it's Pesach al which is referring to the Mishkan, which is much smaller, because the Mishkan is called Mikdash and Mikdash is called Mishkan. 
But says Gemara, a question on both of them now. That is, Bein Rabban, Bein Rabihud, according to either one of them, that we're saying that they say, okay, so this is where they learn it out from, like we said, from the, from the Ulam and from the Heichel. Question is, according to both of them, Lilfimi Pesach Shara We should learn out from the, from the entryway of the gate of the courtyard. Now, as Rashi explains, the question here is on the width. We learned in the Mishnah that if it's wider than ten amas, you have to make it narrow. Now the question is, by the Pesach Chatzar, as we see this picture, this was the Mishkan, and then there was a Chatzar around it, which was surrounded with curtains. The the the, the Pesach Chatzar, the the width of that Pesach was twenty amas wide, and it was called a Pesach, like the Gemara is going to bring. The Pesach says Veskali Chatzar. There were curtains of the courtyard. Vesmesach Pesach Shara Chatzar, which is written in Parshas Nasi. But Rashi explains the question is only on the width, not on the height. We're not, because although we're going to quote Sukkim that seem to say that the height of the curtains are only a height of five amas, we're not asking and saying, oh, what do you mean, learn that from there that it's, the height is only five amas. How can you say 20 or even more? Because the Hechel, we find the opening a height is 20 amas, and we read it's called Pesach. So we're not asking on that. That we know for sure the height could be 20 amas. Question is, we're asking on the width. Let's learn now from the opening of the, of the courtyard's width, because the Chsit, there's a few Sukkim here that have to be put together to bring the Gemara's question. The Pesach says in Shemais, the length of the courtyard of the Mishkan, which was the surrounding area around the Mishkan, was 100 amas. The width was 50 by 50 amas. And the reason why it says that interesting terminology will explain in the second paragraph of Gimel Abbas. But basically it's 100 by 50. Uh, and the height was 5 amas. Now it says in the previous passage, it says, esri ama. And there was 15 amas, there were kloim la kasev, there were curtains for the shoulder, meaning one side. Except there's a pasik later on that says, well, kasev ashenis. And now for the second side, as you can see in this picture, as you'll see the 15 amas, mizel mizel l'shar chatzah, from either side of the, of, the entr- of the gate of the courtyard, was kloim chamesh esri ama, were curtains that were 15 amas. So therefore the opening was in the middle of that width, and you closed with the curtains 15 amas on either side, so you left with 20 amas of a width, because we said there's... 15 and 15 is 30, and 20 is 50, because we said it was 100 by 50. So there's 100 amas in the length, and there's 50 amas in the width. And you're saying on either side of the opening, there's, a, there's curtains 15 amas. So that leaves you with 20 amas in the middle. Like it says, Chamesh Esri Amit Kolim Lakasif, and the Kasif is the shoulder. So therefore, the Gemara has the following question. Malahal, just like over there, the height of the opening was Chamesh, was 5 amas, because all the curtains all around was not higher than 5 amas, like the Pasas and Shemais Chavzayin, the height was five amas. But the main question, according to Rashi, is it was a width of 20 amas by the opening. Safkan, here also, when we're talking about a Pesach, for let's say a Mavli, should be allowed to be, okay, not the height of five amas, but a width of 20 amas. Why are you saying it's only limited to the width of 10 amas? It should be allowed to be 20 amas. Could you tell me, wherever you find the source in the Torah that it's a Pesach, so we should be allowed to have those dimensions for a Pesach. You see that by the Chatzar, the, the width was 20 amas. Why are you limiting it to 10 amas? Because that's what you found over here. By the by the by the heichel, but who cares? You should have twenty amas like you find by the chatzer. So so the, and that says the Gemara, Pesach Shaha Chatzer Ikri. It's called the the doorway of the open the opening of the door of the gate of the of the chatzer. That's what it's called Pesach Shemalo Ikri. But it's not called just an opening for the Shaha Chatzer. That was called Pesach, but it doesn't just have the generic terminology of Pesach. If it would have said Pesach, oh, we see that it's called a Pesach. Pesach oil might. But here it's not called that. It's called Pesach Shar HaChatzah. For the Shar HaChatzah it's opening. <clears throat> but just a Pesach it's not. Or if you buy second approach you could say. It's actually a more complicated answer. Kik siv kaloyim chamesh eser ami l'kaseh. But we said that the curtains were on either side 15 amas. But gaiva hu siv. That was in the height. The height of the eastern curtains on either side were 15 amas high. It wasn't talking about the width. That, the, 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 at the, at, meaning we thought up until now that it was saying it was 15 amas, 15 amas on either side. That leaves you opening at 20 amas. No indication of the width. It was telling you the height of the curtains over here. Here, the height of the curtains were 15 amas high. So, okay, so it doesn't tell us how wide it is. It could have been even, the curtain, the, those sides could have been deeper in and then the opening could have been 10 amas, 5 amas. We don't know regarding those dimensions. It's talking about the height, not regarding the width. It says, Gimur, Gleva? How could you say that he was talking about regarding the height? Vuxiva, the Pasik says, Vukhaima Khamesh Amis, that the curtains were height only five amas. How can you say it was fifteen amas? How can you say those sides were fifteen? With the Pasik tells it was only five. Says the Gemara, no, ha who? That Pasik says the height was five amas. Misfas Mizbeach Ulamal. That was above the height of the Mizbeach, of the altar. Meaning the height of the curtains all around were fifteen amas. But by the by the width of the opening, that would not come in to tell you a measurement of the width, because the Mizbeach was a height of ten amas. 
the curtains all around were five amas above that to make it a height of 15 amas. The reason why was because they didn't want people seeing the coin doing the Abayda on top of the Mizbech, because if he's on top of the Mizbech, that's 10 amas, and he's, everyone's watching him do the Abayda. We wanted a certain level of modesty that people shouldn't be seeing it, and therefore it was five amas above the height of the Mizbech, making a total of 15 amas. That's one interpretation of Rashi. So therefore, again, it could be talking about the height, although the says five, that's only five above the height of the Mizbech. But really, it was a total of 15 amas. But then the Gemara asks, Rabbi Yehuda, we're going back to ask the question. We said that the Chacham learned now from the Hegel, that's called a Pesach, and that's a height of 20 by a width of 10. Rabbi Yehuda learns it out, Mipischa shel ulam gama. He learns it out from the opening of the antechamber, which is more. It's a height of 40 amas and a width of 20 amas. So says the Gemara, how could you say that? So we understand that's why he says it's kosher even higher than 20 amas, but what's not we learned in the mission that said about Recham Asa Yimayit, if it's wider than 10 amas, you have to diminish it. For like Paul Yerbi Yehuda, Yehuda doesn't disagree. He only disagrees regarding the height. But if you tell me he learns that from the ulam, then there should be also more valid, not only in the height, but also in the width. Because the ulam had not only a higher height, but it had a wider width too. It says the Gemara, Mabai, says Paul Yerbi He does, he disagrees in a b'raisa. The time like learning a b'raisa. Baharachev, me yud amis, you might. The Tanakh Kama says if it's wider than ten amis, you should diminish it. And Rabbi Yehuda says no, in the might. No, you don't have to diminish it. Says the Gemara, okay, but looks like we must need. Him. So then go ahead and disagree in the Mishnah. So why are you only talking about in the Bryce? Have his opinion in the Mishnah too. Says the Gemara, yeah, poly begleiv of Adam Larachba. Once we told, once we said that he did, that he disagrees regarding the height, we knew he's going to disagree regarding the width because where does he know it from? From the ulam. That's how he would know it's a valid height in 20 amas. So therefore, we didn't have to tell you that he disagrees in the width. We knew that already. And it's only in the Bryce that it was clarified even more. But it says the Gemara, but Vakati, still it's difficult. Is it really true that he learns from the opening of the antechamber? But for a time you learn the Bryce that says, Mabish, it's higher than 20 amas. The Tanakhama, the Chacham, they hold you have to make it smaller or lower down. And here the words are, Ad Nem Amas. He holds his valid, no, up until 40 amas, up until 50 amas too. That's one b'risa. But Tony Bakapar Bakapara, when he was teaching this opinion of Yehuda in his own b'risa, his words were ad meya, up until a hundred hours. So the Gemara explains like this. This Shlomo the Bakapar, we said according to Bakapar that you could say that according to Yehuda, really, you know it from the ulam. And really, he only validates it up to 40 amas, like it was by the ulam. So why is Bakapar saying up until a hundred amas? So that's a guzma. It's an exaggeration. Because since Rabbi Yehuda is validating higher than 20 amas, higher than 30 amas, so according to Bakapar, it's like an exaggeration. It's like, wow, he, he lets even a hundred amas. But it's just an exaggeration. Really only lets it up until 40 amas. But Rabbi Yehuda, according to Rabbi Yehuda, meaning according to the version of the Tanakh Kama Rabbi Yehuda, that he says up until 40 or 50, my guzma, that's not an exaggeration. 40 is exactly the mark. So Bishlam, Rabbi Yehuda, runs according to Rabbi Yehuda, bomb, he would know that you could do it up until a height of 40 amas, because Gamma Mepes Cheshulam, you're learning it from the opening of the Ulam, which is up until 40 amas. El Anun, but 50 amas, Manali, where would he know that it's valid up until a height of 50 amas? Rav is telling you, you know it from the Ulam. The Ulam's only up until 40 amas. Why would you say up, up until 50? It's not an exaggeration, you're, you're very close to the mark. Why, why are you overthrowing it? 50 amas, where do you know that from? So Rav Vigmar rejects the interpretation of Rav that we had said up until now. Amr Rav Chizda. He says, you're right. Hamas need to the following Bryce I'm about to bring you. Ati'isei l'rav. Misled Rav. Rav, who said that Yehuda learns it out from the opening of the Ulam, the following Bryce and misled him. And it's not true. He doesn't know it from the opening of the Ulam. Like we see, he validates up until 50 Amas. That can't be from the Ulam. Ulam was only up until 40 Amas. The Tanya, what was the Bryce that misled Rav? Mava shugavoy mochafam. If you have a mother that's higher than 20 Amas, yeish mi pisca shalechel, which is more than the opening of the Echel, says the Rabbana, you might have to make it smaller. Now, who said when Rav read this Bryce, he thought, wait a second. Midrabanan, the fact that Drabanan, which is in this Bryce, the Mi Pisca Shalechel, got me the learning from the opening of the Hechel, because that's what you're saying. It's higher than 20 amas, which is higher than the Hechel, you gotta make it lower down. So he thought, wait a second, if Yehuda the disputant must be Mi Pisca Shalechel, because they're both learning out from the same posting, Meshach the Pesach El Maid. Question is, like we said on Oman Al, what's considered the Pesach El Maid? Is the Ulam and the Hechel the same thing or not? So he figured if Drabanan say up until 20 amas, the Yehuda says even more, it must be from the Ulam. But says Rav Chizda Balai, it's not true. The Yehuda Mi Pisca the Malkin Gamar. He was learning out from the palaces of the entryway of kings, which generally, like the openings of the, by, the, by the palaces, are much higher than 20 amas, and that you see is considered as a Pasach. You see in a very practical way, that's a Pasach, and therefore it's even higher than 20 amas. That's what he knows that that's considered Pasach, not from the sources of the Pasik, as we had thought regarding the Ulam, and that's why he holds it even kosher 40, 50 amas. It can be even more than that. Now the Gemara that finished with the Behuda, the Gemara is on the Chacham. Rabbanon, imi Pesach miri, if they learn out from the opening of the Hechel, so, okay, I understand the dimensions. That's exactly like you said. I have 20 amas, 
and a width of 10 ounces. But the bite lost his kegel. If you're learning off from there, and that's when you know that it's considered entry, you should require doors for the mother. Just like the heichel, that, that's called a Pesach, but at doors. I love it, so why do we learn a mission later on the Vira from the base that says, Hechsha Mavi, the way to validate a Mavi, Bisham Hermit Samachlikis, and we'll get to it when we get there. But Bisham says Lechi, which, like we said, Lechi is a side post, or some type of a pole or a board that's stuck in by the end of the wall over there. And Bakaira, he requires not only a side post, but also a cross beam. But we still, I mean, they say no Lechi Aikar, either a side post or a cross beam. But one thing is, we see according to both opinions, you don't need any doors, but why don't you need any doors? Says the Gemara, no, Glas is Lehechel, the doors of the Hechel were not part and parcel of the Pesach. That's what Sneis Baal would have That was just for modesty, like we said, just for, to make it discreet. But it wasn't as a halachic requirement to make it into a door. So then the Gemara says one final question. If that's the case, then Tahani Pesach. Then what we call the, the frame of a doorway should not be able to validate it more than the width of 10 hours. Because we said, did the whole Hechel, why? Because by the Hechel, by the sanctuary, Surusa Pesach, it had a frame of a doorway. And the falachi, and even so, Esra Amish of Dravich was only worth of 10 Amish. So, Alamat is not widely in our Mishnah that the final words in our Mishnah were Mishlei Tzuras Apesa. If it has a doorway, Afa Bisharach of Mesa Amish, even though it's wider than 10 Amish, in the Tzarkh Lamai, you have to diminish it because, oh, that is a doorway, that's a Pesach. Even though a doorway is usually only 10 Amish, more than that is a breach. If you have a figure of a doorway, which is very practical in today's halachic Erevin, so then it's going to be valid even more than 10 Amish. Why? Your whole source is from the Hechel. The Hechel is only up until 10 10 Amish, and the Hechel itself had a Tzuras Apesa. So how can Tzuras allow you even more than that? Says that, says the Gemara, you're right. Midihu taima. With this whole question that you're trying to resolve, is El Lerav. Because the whole question was based on, because you tell me the Rabbanan learned out from the Hechel. And that's where you know the dimensions from. And then you're asking, oh, the Hechel, so then Tzuras Abbasal shouldn't help? You're right. Hamasnalei Rav Yehuda l'chi barav kamei the Rav. Rav Yehuda was telling in front of Rav, this teaching, that if there's a Tzuras Abbasal, which were the words of our Mishnah, that in the Torah Lamaid, you don't have to diminish the width. On that Vamalei, Rav said to him, ask me, no, you should teach in the Tanoi text that Tzarech Lamaid, that you have to go ahead and diminish it. Because yes, Rav disagrees. Rav, who learns it out from the Pesach Shal Hechel, he holds, it's not sufficient. It's not, it's not sufficient without it to be more. Could you learn from the Hechel? The Hechel itself had a Tzuzah Pesach. It was only up until Tanoi was with. And therefore, yes, not like the words of our Mishnah, he amends it to say that Tzarech Lamaid, not in Tzarech Lamaid, because the whole question was according to him. And we're saying, yes, according to him, it actually would have to be a go ahead and, and made smaller because you can't learn that out from that of the, of the Hechel, because the Hechel itself had. So we began to set the base, which was similar to the Mazel Tov. That's really then that you, when someone gets engaged, you get a similar Mazel When we're starting off, we should have good Mazel and good Simmons starting off the new Masechtov. We spoke about, in this Mishnah, a Rubi Chatzeris. Which is, uh, we spoke about a Mavai, what's called a Mavai Sasim, that was higher than 20 Amis. We had a Machlekis, if that's going to be possible. Additionally, if it's wider than 10 Amis, we had a Machlekis, if that's going to be possible too. Which that was explained in the Brice. And then we find, the third part is we said in the Mishnah, it has a Tzuras HaPesach, which is the, a doorway, a frame of a door, then you don't have to make it smaller than 10 Amis. So in the Gemara, the Gemara had an interesting question. By Sukkah, when we say this Allah of higher than 20 Amis, we said possible, because it's too hard to see. You don't really recognize it. By Mavu, we say, oh, a Takanta, we say, okay, lower it down. Why? Why that discrepancy? So one interpretation was, because Sukkah is the Raisa. So we could tell you, this public halacha that you know about, Laman Yehudu, they you have to be able to know that you're in the Sukkah, where it can't be higher than 20 Amis, we can tell that that doesn't pass the mark, it's invalid. By Mavu, we never told you any such halacha, so we're telling you now the rabbinic law, we can't tell you possible. We'll tell you, wait, this is, this is not what we want, well, this is what we want. Second interpretation was, no, Sukkah simply has many different teachings. And if you would say each takana, it would go a very long run on Mishnah. My mother, it doesn't have so many different halachas, and therefore you could just say the takana, say lower it down and make it narrow. Now, according to Rav, the understanding of the machlekes in the Mishnah is what's called a pesach. The pasuk says v'shachte pesach oyel Now, according to Rabbanan, the oyel moid is the heichel because the kedusha of the heichel and the ulam have different sanctity. When it says the oyel moid, that's only the heichel. Now, the heichel is where we know that it's a height of tw- up twenty amas and a width of ten amas. According to you, to know the heichel and the ulam have the same sanctity. And the ulam is higher than 20 amas. So therefore, it could be kosher. It's called the Pesach of Ayul Mayid, even that of the ulam, which is even higher than 20 amas. Now, the Gemara pointed out, wait a second. How are you even learning off from this Pesach? That Pesach is by the Mishkan. The Mishkan is where it says, this Pesach of Pesach Ayul Mayid. That the height was actually only 10 amas. How could it be 20 even more? Now, the Gemara said that the Mishkan is called Mishkan, and where we find the Pesach of the Nesati, Mishkan of the Seich, and that was already in Mayikur, and they had the Mishkan. And you're saying, I'll put my Mishkan, my Mishkan. Yeah, because it's talking about the Mikdash, it's called Mishkan. And we find the Mishkan is called Mikdash, 
Where do you find that? Because it says va'asul the mikdash v'shachanti b'seichem, and that refers to the mishkan, and we see that it was called a mikdash. So therefore, it's not difficult that we're learning from the pasuk. It's not by the mishkan, the laws, the, the dimensions of the base of mikdash. Second interpretation was we know from a different pasuk in Yecheskel of pesach ulam habayis. According to Rabbi Yehuda, yeah, you see the ulam is called a pesach. According to Rabbanan, no, it's regarding this word of habayis that's open to the ulam that's called a pesach. But we don't find that the ulam is called a pesach by itself, and therefore it's only going to be valid up until twenty hours, not more than that. Then we said the next halacha in the Mishnah was the width of the Pesach is only until 10 Amas. And why did you learn now from the Pesach Shaha Chatzer, which that width is 20 Amas? So why is everyone saying only the width up until 10 Amas? Because, like the Gemara said, it's called Pesach Shaha Chatzer, but it's not just called Pesach. So therefore, you can't learn out Pesach, it's a Pesach of the Shaha Chatzer. But as a Pesach itself, we wouldn't find it's called a Pesach more than 20 Amas. The second answer was that actually this that it says that the, that the curtains on either side were chamesh esri amal akasif, that was talking about the height. It was not talking about the width. So the height, it doesn't tell us the width that was, that was 15 or 15 and the middle is 20. It's talking about the height is 15. So that doesn't tell us anything regarding the opening of the middle. And I, it says that the height was actually only five amas. How can you say the height was 15? That was misfas misbech lamal. Misbech was 10 amas. We're telling you five amas higher than that, which was for a total of 15 amas. So it only talks about the height, doesn't tell us regarding the width. Then we had Rabbi Huda, that actually in the Brisa he validates the opening more than 10 Amas in the Reichiv, in the width, although he doesn't say that in the Mishnah. And the reason is because he learns out from the opening of the Ulam, just like the height could be more than 20 Amas, so the width could be more. The difficulty is that we have a Brisa that says Rabbi Huda says it's valid up until 40 or 50 Amas. Now, Bakapur, that says up until 100, you can understand it's a Guzma. But according to the verse that 50, where do you know 50 from? If you learn it from Pesach to Ulam, only to a height of 40 Amas, because the Ulam itself is only 40, how do you know 50? So the Rav Chizda says, you're right, that the Bryce misled Rav. <coughs> he assumed from the fact that Rabban will learn from the opening of the Hegel, which only until 20 Amas. So if you would learn from the Ulam, says Rav Chizda, it's not the case. We learn from the opening of the palaces of kings, of, and therefore there it's even higher than 20 Amas. That's what he knows from it, doesn't know from the Ulam, and therefore that's not his source, and therefore it could be valid even higher than 40 Amas, it could be even up to 50 Amas. Then the Gemara finished off with Rabban, that they learned that from the opening of the Hegel. So wait a second, why didn't you need doors? If the Hegel itself had doors, and you're learning it from there? No, because that was only for to be modest, for this, to be discreet. But it had nothing to do with the halachic dimensions. And this, that it helps a Tzuris HaPesach to be more than 10 Amas, why should it help more? Even though in the Beis Amikdash, they had a Tzuris HaPesach, and it was, only until, it was only a whiff of 10 Amas. So it says, well, you're right, that whole question is only according to Rav. Rav actually said that, not like our Mishnah, that, yeah, right, if it's more than 10 Amas, even if it's Tzuris Tzarech Lamaik, you would have to make it smaller, you're right. Just like we find by the Hechel, that it was only up until 10 Amas, even the Tzarech Lamaik, Tzarech Lamaik would not let you have, according to Rav, more than 10 Amas. Thank you to any time for hosting us.